which we are going right now is called Kamati Pura, the in uh, like <laughs> Mumbai's most infamous red light area where we are born and brought up everything. Mm -hmm. So there is usually the brothel place, you can say. spent my 16, 17 years over there, I was born there. We didn't have any education about sex, about good touch, bad touch. So didn't have any knowledge that I was raped at the age of 10. Your background is never your weakness. It's always your strength. I always thought that it's it's my weakness, but after coming to Kranti, you get so many opportunities that I realized that my background is never my weakness. It's just my double strength, I could say. It's, it's completely my strength. I'm one of the co-founders of Kranti, and Kranti empowers girls from Mumbai's red light areas to become agents of social change. I am a teacher at the school here, and we basically work with teenage girls ages 12 to 20 um, who are from Mumbai's biggest red light area, Kamatipura. They're either girls who have been trafficked, daughters of sex workers, or girls who are just born and raised in Kamatipura red light area. Kranti means revolution in Hindi and we call our girls revolutionaries or Krantikaris and uh, basically the idea was that we want to revolutionize everything about sex work in India, about the way that these girls are looked at in India, um, the way that society treats them, you know, a phrase that they hear all the time, you know, in Hindi is Randi ki beti, Randi banegi, or a whore's daughter is only going to be a whore. And that's kind of the expectation that everyone's always had for them. It's what they've heard their entire lives. And, you know, these girls really, like, they have so much potential and, you know, the ability to become absolutely anything that they want. But not just becoming, you know, in terms of, like, career-wise or whatever, but they really, really are agents of social change. And we really want to um, kind of harness their power as agents of social change and, you know, unleash them on the world so that they can kind of revolutionize so much about India. The thing is, a life of a sex worker or a life Because of the different literacy levels and everything that's in our classroom, it's really hard to just work from, you know, get out this textbook and, you know, turn to page so-and-so and, you know, find this lesson and go read it. Um, so we really have a fun time integrating everything that Mumbai has to offer into, into their curriculum. Um, whether it's you know theater or film festivals, um, going out to research uh, the one and only Jewish center in Mumbai, or you know whatever it may be. After that first initial hour of you know yoga, meditation, journals, and everything, we do just a few minutes of creative thinking exercises, puzzles, logic puzzles, and games, some news and geography. Anything that you want to write about, um, it can be about your day. Um, sometimes we just assign like a, a random topic for journaling, um, but it's just a way for them to be able to like write about um, what's going on in life, what they're thinking about, what they're feeling. Um, that kind of thing and it's just completely um, you can write in Hindi you can write in English um, it's just also writing practice as well somebody looks over the journals and just kind of gives them a little bit of like guidance on you know improving English or whatever it might be that they're working on and then every day after that for two hours there's a different theme for every day so Monday is music day um, TED talk Tuesdays Worldly Wednesdays, Thinking Thursdays, and Field Trip Fridays. We do have a lot of science programs as well, so on Thinking Thursdays, um, every other week almost, we have a science experiment that somebody comes in to do with the kids. So there's, you know, um, we did science camps with them for a while as well. Today, for example, was Music Monday, um, and we uh, looked at one artist, MIA. What we did today was start with some energetic vocabulary. Usually I just go through and pick out a good five to ten words that they can catch, you know, that day. Um, so they basically have to listen to the song a couple times and fill in the blanks of the words that are missing. 
After that, we um, did this other song, which is called Borders, and it's basically about the refugee crisis. The task was, um, you know, in the song, she just has these very simple li lyrics about, you know, borders, what's up with that? Politics, what's up with that, you know? And then you have to create your own, what's up with that song. So a couple of the girls said they want to talk about sex work, a couple of the girls are going to do, you know, different kind of issues, whether it's, you know, abuse or something that they faced that to them is this very like, what's up with that, man? She just wished on this thing about learning about the world, learning about everything and becoming a good person. It is very meaningful music, whatever we learn, from through which we learn many things like that help us in our life to apply. Now a special play performance in Mumbai called the Lal Bhatti Express which sets this play apart is the performers are all children of sex workers. <laughs> that what's really awesome about our ability to use music and TED Talks and all of these things is how much we're able to connect it to their lives. Every single lesson that we have, the girls say, hey, that's, you know, that's me and blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's my mom coming from Bangladesh. Hey, that's, you know, um, we even talked about this art change mindsets. And, you know, the girls said, what are we trying to do with our theater program? That's what we're trying to do, right? Um, so, you know, these are things that they connect with very, very heavily. And I think that that's what really sinks the lesson in for them. Um, she's saying that she really enjoys, um, she gets to choose what she wants to do here, and she really enjoys, her two favorite things here are theater and drawing. And her thing for me is, is like, you know, the person with glasses. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, she's just... She's saying um, she feels really close to me, um, that she's able to communicate with me and stuff and share with me. We really strive to help these girls find what their passion and talent is and turn that into something that's a sustainable career. One girl named Shweta, she actually uh, went to university in uh, New York at Bard College and at the time she was the first girl from a red light area ever to study abroad from India. We do have a lot of students who are never going to succeed academically. Kids with too many mental health issues, with you know learning disabilities, um, you know so many different disorders and stuff. And then you start to ask you know, if this person's never going to succeed, are they not worthwhile as a human being or as a student? Um, of course they are. And what are they going to bring to the world? Their happiness and their compassion. And that is the best thing that they can offer, that any person can offer, regardless of how successful you are academically or business-wise or whatever. In the end, the people who spread positivity in this world are people who are happy and compassionate. in my last five years of teaching at Kranthi. The first lesson is about the purpose of life. What do you guys think the purpose of life is? I think that the purpose of life is to seek and spread happiness. And this I've learned from a 19-year-old girl named Pinky, who came to us at age 14, and she'd been trafficked at the age of nine. So she was forced to sleep with many people. She came to us with a lot of drug and um, alcohol addiction, um, self-harm habits. She would cut herself. And it's taken a lot of healing and a lot of therapy for Pinky to get to a better place. She's still, she's on medication. Um, she still struggles with her mental health issues. She has dyslexia. She doesn't study in mainstream schools. But what I see when I look at Pinky every single day is somebody who's able to make people laugh and spends 90% of her day laughing and making others laugh. And when I think about everything that she's experienced in the past, if she can overcome all of that and spend her entire day laughing, I think that's a really big lesson for us to learn, that the purpose of life is actually to seek and spread happiness. 
So I thank Pinky for teaching me that every single day. The second lesson is about success. What is the definition of success? I think that success is about how many people's lives you impact positively. And this I learned from 21-year-old Shito, who came to us at 17. And at 17, she'd only been in fourth standard and seventh standard, and had never studied beyond that. And we put her in 10th, and she kept failing over and over. Um, so eventually we said, you know what, let's set aside academics and let's focus on what her talent and passion is, which was drums. And she'd been playing drums already for a couple years and we applied to music schools all over India. And everyone said, she doesn't speak English, um, she's not rich enough, uh, she probably isn't talented enough to, to be with our student. So we said, okay, never mind. And then we applied abroad to the UK and the US. She was accepted to four music schools, two in the UK and two in the US and she received a nine-month scholarship to study drums in Washington. So she's still now, actually, after those nine months in Washington, she returned to India about a year ago, and for the last year, she's been working with the organization called Tal in, in Pune, where she works as a drum circle facilitator. And the most amazing thing about Sheetal to me is when I look at her and watch her leading drums with young children who are from marginalized communities. And the smile on Sheetal's face when she drums and the smile on the faces of all the kids that she drums with, kids who would never get to hold a drum if it wasn't for Sheetal. That, to me, is the definition of success. <laughs> Thank you, Sheetal. Sheetal's here with me in the front row, so she'll be speaking right after this. I thank Sheetal every single day for teaching me the definition of success. And the third major lesson I've learned is what a meaningful life is. And this I've learned from all of the sex workers I've worked with over the years. Because sex workers have probably one of the hardest jobs in the world. And yet they wake up every day and they go to work. Why? Because they're not working for themselves. They're living their life for somebody else. They go to work every day so that their kids can go to English schools, so their kids can have office jobs, so their kids can move out of Kamatpur, a red light area. And the sacrifice that they make for their kids every single day inspires me to no end. And you know, I honestly have to say, some of the sex workers I've met are the happiest people in the world because they're living their life thinking beyond themselves and living for somebody else. And this to me is what a meaningful life looks like. And I thank the sex workers I know every single day for teaching me this. Now you're probably wondering what a woman with an American accent is doing in the red light areas of Mumbai, right? Um, I did grow up in America. I grew up with the American dream, a gigantic house, two or three cars in the garage, my parents were both employed. It was the American dream. But both of my parents also had mental illnesses. My mom has schizophrenia and my dad was bipolar. My house and my childhood were full of domestic violence. My earliest memories from childhood are of my parents burning each other with irons and my sister and I hiding because we didn't know what to do. So at a very young age, about nine or 10, I started questioning what is the purpose of life? We have a house, we have a car, we have all of those things that people tell us are going to bring us happiness, and yet we're not happy. We have what people call success, and yet we're not happy. Is there any meaning to our lives when you're living like this? And eventually it was these questions that led me to volunteer and to work all across the world, um, working with kids with HIV, working with girls who are trafficked, working with deaf children all around the globe. And Whenever we set out to seek answers of some sort, I think we find them in the place where we least expect them, and I have found those answers in Mumbai's red light area. And every single day, I thank these women and these girls for having taught me these important, important lessons. So before I welcome Sheetal on stage, I just want to say to all of you, please go out, seek and spread happiness. Redefine success for yourself. Don't listen to what the world tells you is success. And most of all, never, never, never stop searching to create a meaningful life. Thank you. When I was young, I was ready to see my mom every evening. Sometimes we were ready to see her. But she was also ready to see her. She was 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 ready to see her. But my mom was ready to see her. She was ready to see her. She was ready to see her. वो तो टैक्सी में बैठ के चली जाती थी उस टाइम पे मुझे पता नहीं था कि वो किधर जा रही है क्यों जा रही है पर जब मैं बड़ी हुई तब मुझे पता चला कि मेरी मम्मी एक बाहर डांसर है 
हाँ मैं एक बाढ़ डांसर की बेटी हूँ मैं शीतल जैन कमाटीपुरा मुंबई से बचपन में मुझे सब लोग बोलते थे कि तेरी माँ एक बार डांसर है तो तू भी बड़ी होके बार डांसर ही बनेगी मुझे कभी बार डांसर नहीं बनना था और ना ही मेरी मम्मी चाहती थी कि मैं कभी बार डांसर बनूं मुझे मेरी मम्मी के काम से कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं था बस बचपन में एक ही बात बहुत बुरी लगती थी हर शाम को वो एक नए आदमी को घर पर ले आ जाती थी और उन्हीं में से एक आदमी मेरे माँ का बिना शादी किया हुआ पति बन गया और मेरे भाई का पिता और उसी ने मेरा सेक्सुअली अब्यूज किया था जब वो करता था तभी मुझे समझता नहीं था कि एग्जैक्टली वो क्या कर रहा है क्योंकि वो सबके सामने मुझे पापा का प्यार लाइक पापा का प्यार करने का तरीका है तो वो प्यार ही कर रहा है मुझे ऐसा ही लगता था बट मुझे समझता नहीं था कि इससे मुझे हर्ट क्यों हो रहा है और मैं उस टाइम पर बहुत सोचती थी मुझे भागना चाहिए था उस पापा के पास से कुछ करना चाहिए था मम्मी को जाके बोलना था और मैं खुद को ही बहुत खोजती रहती थी जब मैं क्रांति में आई मुझे काउंसलिंग मिली तब मुझे पता चला वो सिचुएशन में मेरे मेरे हाथ में था ही नहीं मेरी कुछ गलती है ही नहीं और वो बात को लेके मैं बैठी रहूँगी तो उससे मुझे ही हार्म होगा सामने वाले पर्सन को थोड़ी होगा तो मैंने वो बात को लेट गोई कर दिया और बहुत हेल्प होता है उससे मैं बचपन से पढ़ाई लिखाई से ऐसे नहीं कर रही मैं दूसरी चौथी सातवीं दसवीं बारहवीं इतना ही की हो और बहुत अलग अलग एन में रही हो मैं जब दसवीं में पहली बार गई थी तो एक एन में थी और वहाँ पे कोई भी बॉयज़ को देखना किसी से भी बात करना इवन खिड़की के बाहर देखना कुछ अलाउड नहीं था कुछ नहीं बस स्कूल जाना फिर घर आना उस टाइम पे मैं लाइक कुछ फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन की थी और जैसे हर टीन का बॉयफ्रेंड होता है तो मेरा भी एक बॉयफ्रेंड था जो मुझे बहुत पसंद करता था और जब उनको पता चला कि ये एक लड़का है बोल के तो उन लोगों ने मुझे दसवीं से निकाल के घर में बिठा दिया उस टाइम पे दसवीं में रहना मेरे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात थी क्योंकि मैं कभी पढ़ाई नहीं की थी मुझे कुछ समझता नहीं था और स्कूल जाना रेगुलर नॉर्मल लाइफ देखना वो मेरे लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट था तब मैं वहाँ से निकल के क्रांति में आई क्रांति जैसे आप लोग को पता है एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो डॉटर ऑफ सेक्स वर्कर के साथ कम करता है टू बिकम एजेंट ऑफ सोशल चेंज तो वहाँ पे आई मैं तो दसवीं पूरा कर, कर ही रही थी मैं रोज स्कूल जाती थी मुझे कुछ साइंस कुछ मैथ्स कुछ समझता नहीं था रोज रो रो के घर पे वापस आ जाती थी और मुझे पता था पढ़ाई लिखाई मेरे पल्ले पढ़ने वाला ही नहीं है मैं इसमें आगे जाने वाली ही नहीं हूँ और क्रांति में मुझे पहली बार मेरी लाइफ में पूछा कि तुझे एग्जैक्टली करना क्या है अपने लाइफ में और मुझे कोई था ही नहीं उसके पहले मेरी लाइफ में कि मुझे कोई पूछे कि तुझे करना क्या है तब मैंने ड्रम चूज किया था कि मुझे सिर्फ ड्रम सीखना है ड्रम इसके लिए क्योंकि बचपन में जो गणपति विसर्जन होता है तो मैं हमेशा आदमी लोग को बजाते हुए देखती थी और मुझे लगता था अरे सिर्फ आदमी लोग ही बजा सकते हैं हम लड़कियाँ तो बजा ही नहीं सकते और मेरे को तो कभी वो अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलेगा ही नहीं कभी सोचा मतलब कब कर ही नहीं सकती हूँ मैं ये बट जब मुझे पता चला कि अरे लड़की लोग भी कर सकती है ये सब चीज़ तो तब मैं मुंबई में रह के दसवीं कर ही रही थी दो तीन बार फेल हो गई ड्रमिंग क्लास जाती थी तब दी को मैंने बोला मुझे पढ़ाई वढ़ाई नहीं करना है मुझे कुछ और करना है ड्रमिंग में ही अपना करियर बनाना है तब मैं एक साल के लिए यूएस गई वहाँ पे एक साल अलग अलग एक्सपीरियंस किया ड्रमिंग किया सीखा फिर यू से आने के बाद मुझे पता नहीं था कि मैं अब अपने लाइफ का क्या करूँगी मुझे क्या करना है बैंड ज्वाइन करना है परफॉर्मेंस करना है या क्या करना है तब थैंक्स टू रॉबिन मुझे ताल इंक के बारे में पता जल तो पता चला एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो ड्रम सर्कल ऑर्गेनाइज करता है वहाँ पे मैंने कोर्स किया अब मैं ताल इंक के साथ काम करती हूँ एज अ ड्रम सर्कल फैसिलिटेटर और मैं ताल इंक के हेल्प से एक केटो वेबसाइट है जहाँ पे मैं फंड रेजिंग करती हूँ जिन मुझे अंडर प्रिवलेज चिल्ड्रन के साथ ड्रम सर्कल करना है और कर करते ही रहना है क्योंकि जो वो अपॉर्चुनिटी उनको मिलेगा नहीं अगर मैं मैं चाहती हूँ कि मैं उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी दूँ अब जब मैं सपने देखने लगी हूँ तो मेरा एक और सपना है कि मैं मेरी बेस्ट फ्रेंड के साथ जो श्वेता कट्टी है और कविता होसमनी है जो क्रांति में रहते हैं उनके साथ साथ रेड लाइट एरिया में एक कैफ़े खोलूँ जो अपॉर्चुनिटी मुझे नहीं मिली वो अपॉर्चुनिटी मैं उनको देना चाहती हूँ और उनको बताना चाहती हूँ जो रियलाइज़ मुझे हुआ कि मेरा बैकग्राउंड मेरा मेरा पास्ट मेरा लाइक like, वीकनेस नहीं है बल्कि वो मेरा स्ट्रेंथ है वैसे ही मैं चाहती हूँ कि उन लोग भी यह आसमान में उड़े थैंक यू